Is someone going to change the slides? Just go for it. Top is a pointer, right and left. Yeah. Oh, sorry, we need your presentation. This, this put a lot of pressure on me. You said you're going to be the last speaker, so make sure they laugh at your jokes so they leave happy. There you are. So. <laughs> There you are. Yeah, Tesla things. Uh, I am not going to make a confession right up front here. I'm the marketing guy. I'm not the coding expert. If anybody has any really technical questions, I'll try and answer them. If not, you know, give me your card and we'll get an answer back to you. I want to give you a little bit of uh, background on Tesla Nano Codings. Um, Todd Hawkins, who's the president and founder of the company, has been working on carbon nano coatings for about 20 years. How many people here are responsible for corrosion coatings in your company or do specs or anything like that for the company? Okay. If anybody sees anything here they like, take it back to the people who do. How many people here are familiar with carbon nano coatings? Carbon nanotubes? Okay. You're, you're going to find this interesting because saying, my, I'm the, you know, the marketing guy, I have no background in this, but this, I've been with Todd for three years now, it's been an incredible trip things we have done and where we are. Someone said three years ago, this would have been, I would be shocked. But Todd started the company in 2005. He worked at uh, um, Lockheed Martin in the aerospace industry, saw all the problems of galvanizing, thought carbon nanotubes were the way to go, and he started this business then. We have 10 years of development experience with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. We're working with them since 2007, and we have projects at Fort Bragg and, and uh, Fort Lewis. We commercialized the company in 2012. That's when I started working with Todd on doing that. We're headquartered right around the corner in Masson, Ohio. And we do a lot of work with the University of Akron and Texas A&M on coatings for primarily the oil and gas industry there. Uh, we have 11 patents. We have five patents pending uh, on, on the coatings, and uh, it's, it's been really incredible. Corrosion is the ultimate challenge. I used to be in uh, uh, advertising, I used to in advertising at one time, and uh, I've never seen a market like corrosion. You know, like, like Keith and Vince had said, it's huge. I see numbers of it's a, globally, it's a $400 billion industry. Everything corrodes. Everything corrodes. And most of it is steel, and our product is designed for steel substrate. The other thing that's really interesting about you know, the corrosion industry is, I said, my whole background is marketing. Everybody loves some products. I have yet to meet one person, and I go to every oil and gas show here in the Marcellus, the Utica, and down in Texas. Texas. No one has walked up to me and said, we love our coatings. We don't need your coatings. Everybody is looking for new coatings. The root cause of corrosion, I'm going to flip right through that because people know much more about that scope today. Traditional corrosion, then I'm going to talk about the new technology in corrosion and answer any questions that you may have. You guys know about what causes corrosion? Yeah. Treatment is often inadequate. You know, one of the problems with so much of the corrosion is you know, once they find it, they don't treat it properly. You know, the corrosion maintenance, kind of clean the surface, remove the rust, how do you do that? Peel, strip, chip, repair, paint, wash. You do all those sorts of things in doing it. But many times, you know, it's not done as well as it could be. You know, in, in, in the ideal world, for coatings, people that are familiar with NACE, it's called SP10. You have seal substrate and the sand blast is what's almost white, and then you put the coating on. But many times, out in the field when you use coatings, it's not like that way. If you're lucky, someone's out there with a metal grinder getting some of the, the rust off, and then they start putting the coatings on top of it that way. But, you know, the, the, the carbon nanotubes technology addresses some of those issues. When you look at the traditional maintenance, it's a three-coat process. 
ours is a two code process. Our 10 years of testing with the US Army Corps of Engineers has demonstrated that we save a considerable amount of money versus the three code process. We're slowly getting adopted, Mike and I were talking later, we're slowly getting adopted by the Army because they have to rewrite all the regs to go from a three code process to a two code process and no one will buy it because it's two code and the books say three codes. So we're working with that. On well, the three code process, the primer code is primarily zinc, 85, 85, 90%, which is not good for the environment, as you all know. It provides a cathodic protection. There's a mid coat, which is put on there to keep the zinc on there. Otherwise, the zinc falls off and flakes, we have problems. And the top coat is protection and appearance. Carbon, nano, carbon nanotubes were discovered at Rice in 1985. So it's really new technology. It really is, and everybody's still trying to figure out what to do with it. It offers <coughs> numerous cutting edge functional properties. It's really pretty amazing uh, material. We think it's the best available coating technology that's out there today. It's safer and user friendly. It's better for the environment than anything else out there today. And it provides substantial you know, savings. Here's the things that's interesting about carbon nanotubes is that they're the strongest, stiffest material known to man. They're denser than diamonds. The chemical bonds, as I said, are stronger than diamonds. The current carrying capacity is a thousand times greater than copper. We'll show you how important that is to us. And the tensile strength is 50 times greater than steel. And I have some samples over there, just the primer on it. And I was out in Denver a couple weeks ago with a guy who's been applying paint for many, many years. And he had a piece of steel to put our primer on it. And I was in a meeting with him for like two hours. And he kept banging on our primer saying, boy, this stuff is really hard, isn't it? And I said, yeah, it really is hard. And that's the benefit of the carbon nanotechnology. It really provides this incredible coating. <coughs> and, and the way it sets up is that the carbon nanotubes have these ropes. And these ropes do two things. One, they're reinforcing, they're strengthening the steel that we coat, and it creates an uh, electron path to carry current. So what this does, is this is where we not only provide incredible barrier protection, but we also provide cathodic protection. The a lot of, you know, I don't care what anyone says, the greatest coatings in the world, it's going to get damaged. There's going to be some abrasion, nick, ruin. So what the carbon nanotechnology does, it activates, it generates the, the zinc and the, the uh, oxygen to form these nanowires, and it becomes, it creates its own plug and becomes self-healing. So that even when you have that abrasion, the carbon nanotubes with the zinc fill the holes that prevent any more oxygen or water or rust from penetrating the surface. And if you look at the far right, that's traditional uh, primers. In ours, we have much less zinc in it than theirs. If we do a close-up of those, you can see for that to work, it's almost like all the zinc molecules are touching. And we have very few. Our product has about 45 to 50 percent uh, zinc in it, so it's significantly less than, than uh, what's out in the environment. So, you know, the kind of what does that give us? It gives us incredible tensile strength, and like we're doing work now, the, the Denver Zoo has started to use our product, and but they, they have horrible, horrible erosion problems, and they were. Uh, you know, the animals are everywhere, and the animals cause corrosion, believe me. And they were out there, and they would go out and paint surfaces, and they'd go back three weeks later, and the rust would start to come through again. And I was out there with them, and they painted the surface four months. The rust hadn't come through. We think it's, you know, you thought it was great. We used to look at it. should be like this for many, many years to come as a result of that. But it provides the scratch and abrasion, impact resistance, and 
you know, the elongation. So what that means is with the carbon nanotubes is if there's a lot of, you know, like in Denver, where it gets very hot, it gets very cold, it expands and contracts, so you don't get, you know, the micro, uh, micro, micro cracking properties right there with it. We have incredible adhesion and cathodic protection. This is nine years of testing with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. I'll read this to you. This is outdoor exposure, 88 months. Salt water, you can see the effect of salt water and fresh water immersion for 88 months. So you can see with the scarring there, there's only been in fresh water, there's been slight, slight rusting as a result of that right there. This is Army testing there where two coat system versus a three coat system. And you can see we're only 213 microns in our systems, 323 and 335 with three coat. So it's much, much thicker. And you know, you see that barrier protection that ours creates versus the three coat system. The other thing is we've done cohesion testing. I'm going to play with cohesion testing, four cycle testing. It's salt, dry, ultraviolet, and then condensation as a result of that. And this is how our product performed the two coat process versus the three coat process. So you can see the product really performs well in those areas. The most important thing that the product does is the adhesion. When you look at you know adhesion of other uh, corrosion corroding corrosion protection products, the norm for adhesion for the what they call the pull test, which put the dollies on, you try and pull it off, is around 600, 700 hours. We're at about 4,000. Sometimes we get almost up to 5,000. And what happens is, with ours, is the primer doesn't come off, the glue fails. So that's the incredible adhesion that we get from our product. And, and when you look at these photos here, here you can see where the primer comes off. When you look at our product up there, what that is, that's the glue that is still on the primer as a result of that. So, you know, it's safer, friendly to use. CNT, the, the carbon nanotubes are inextricably bound, low VOC. Todd, he created this product. These were two parameters. He said is that no special equipment and no special training. Anybody that's got a spray applicator can use our product. Works with roller. I was, a, I was on the phone with the guy today. He's doing work for us. And he uses a roller, and he, uh, you know, he figured it out. Uh, it's surface tolerant. You know, it's very forgiving. If someone's doing, uh, you know, uh, maintenance, and they don't get all the rust off. If you put our primers on top of it, it really prevents a lot of the rust from coming through. It really performs well. And then. It's greener than the traditional St. Bridge products, which I gotta believe becomes more important every day. What are the cost savings? Because it's only a, it's a two coat process versus a three coat process, you immediately save 30%, which is a big deal. Material costs are similar, we maybe a little bit more. We improve the uh, life 200%, and that's based upon the US Army Corps of Engineers based on their algorithms, they say our two coat process will last twice as long as any three coat process that's being used today with the carbon nanotubes. 900% ROI is based upon if you had to replace a structure and that's how they arrived at that and then, and then the pre-safety. The other thing that I forgot to put in here with carbon nanotubes technology is you can spray wet on wet. So in other words, when you put the primer on, for 30 minutes you can put the top coat on. We're working with a company, I keep shaking your head, we're working with a company down in Texas. They're using it on OEM, 
it will increase their throughput by 275% because they don't have to wait that next day for it to dry. And that, I tell you, I am really new to this field. I mean, I'm clueless. What convinces me is when I go out and go to people that have been spraying paint their entire life and say, this is the best thing I ever sprayed. Who's done in the Broussard, Louisiana, guys who spray paint the uh, platforms. And what's really interesting, the company's BIS Salamis, they're a big global maintenance company for offshore platforms. And they created this, you know, this piece of equipment that has all kinds of nuts and bolts and crevices in it. And if you want to get a job as an applicator for that company, you have to spray this. And this is how they determine whether you can spray or not. So one of their seasoned painters sprayed our product there and couldn't get over the fact that one, you know, the, the product does not drip and, it, and there's no drag on it. You know, it, it, you can put it on 30, 40 mils thick and it doesn't sag. And I've been, I've been at spray test where a guy has all the, you know, the equipment on, he's spraying. We say put 40 mils on, you can see the guy's head snap back. They spray it on and it doesn't sag at all. Uh, this carbon nail technology, it's really incredible. You know, and I, I tell people, we're changing the world, you know, with this corrosion coating. We really are. And R&D Magazine in 2011 created this product as one of their top 100 products that will change the world. And this is the data that was submitted by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers of two coat versus three coat. Barrier properties, cathodic protection, adhesion to the substrate, durability, abrasion resistance, number of coats, ease of application, and the applied the field, cost, and then 30 year life cycle. So this, you hear a lot about nanotechnology, and, and the word is bantied around very loosely because there's companies that say they have nanotechnology coatings that do not have any carbon nanotubes or anything else in there. They're just saying that they're using it. Our patents are on the dispersion of the carbon nanotubes. As we say, that's the secret sauce. Because a lot of people have tried to use carbon nanotubes, but the ability to maintain dispersion is really, really difficult. And that's a, an example of the cost savings. Just contact information. So I'd be glad to answer any questions that anybody has. Thank you very much.